Welcome to the Song Studio with Johnny Melnick. Here we find and spotlight original music and songwriters to discuss all things music. From the songwriting process to music theory, music publishing, and more. Tune in for both live performances and interviews from local artists. Hey everybody, welcome, welcome, welcome to the uh, the fourth fourth installment of the Song Studio. My name is Johnny Melnick, and uh, I have I'm very very excited about uh, today's show. We have a special guest, David Barreto, a great singer songwriter who's uh, actually living in Switzerland now. He's from my hometown of Levittown, New York. We're going to talk about a little bit about Levittown, New York. Uh, today uh, and I'll give you a little more history of uh, myself and where how I grew up and the uh, the uh, situations and the uh, the musical environment in uh, in Long Island New York in the growing up in the 1960s it was really really something not only in Levittown but you know all over the country it was exploding the Beach Boys Beatles Four Seasons uh, we had a, a slew of bands on Long Island, but before we get into all of that, I would like to acknowledge and thank the Pompano Beach Chiropractic Clinic, Jason Ch Cheshire, specifically, who are now my uh, sponsoring the uh, song studio, and I, I can't tell you enough about these guys. I've been going to the Pompano Chiropractic Clinic for say the last 15 years for maintenance and I've had a couple of back issues as we, as we we do in life and uh, each and every time I've gone to them for help they've come through and set me back on the right track so uh, I want to thank Jason John and the crew over at Pompano Beach Chiropractic Clinic for signing on and helping me out with the uh, the production of this show, so we're very, 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 very grateful, and we'll be hearing uh, a little more about that. Jason actually is a, has a, a degree in science and nutrition, doctor in chiropractic, 20 years experience, board certified by the American College of Physiology, and neuropathy. Neuropathy is a new and serious problem for people. Circulation things like that. It's also involved in church and community. And the, the Pompano Beach Chiropractic Clinic is at 4 Northeast 4th Avenue, just north of Atlantic, Atlantic Avenue in Pompano Beach. Phone number 954-943-1044. So if you're having any kinds of problems with, your, with, your, with anything, actually, call them up. That's again 954-943. Four three one zero four four the Pompano Beach Chiropractic Clinic. Thank you guys. So, back to the issue at hand. Johnny Melnick, I've been a lifetime lifelong musician. It's been a fabulous, fabulous life. Not the easiest kind of life, as, as you, some of you people in your songwriting out there know. It's, uh, you know, you don't know where it's going and how it's going, but all you know is you have to keep it going. So, I started when I was 14 years old playing in an eighth grade high school dance with my, <laughs> with the band of Shandells, the world famous Shandells, Cal Kramer, happy birthday, bro. Eric Stern, Bob Sanborn, somewhere in North Carolina right now. And uh, we miss them all and love them all, always will. And uh, this is how it started. I never stopped. It, 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 it just took, I was playing, I, I got into some interesting things going on here. Uh, I grew up playing the accordion. I, I'm now based on the piano, but my mother, my mother uh, brought an accordion in. There was a guy going through the neighborhood selling accordions. If you can imagine selling accordions door to door, what life was like in the late 1950s door-to-door -door selling accordions. Talk about a tough job. <laughs> but people were buying them because a guy named Lawrence Welk was on TV on Sunday night, 
Ed Sullivan, Lawrence Welk, this kind of thing, that kind of entertainment, and everybody wanted to get their kid. Not every kid playing music. Not everybody had room for a piano in the house. So the accordion, you know, it was a European instrument, and uh, a lot of people could relate to that because a lot of our, our families uh, uh, and grandparents came from Europe. And so the accordion was, a, was almost a natural, uh, natural progression. So anyway, long story short, my mother brings home an accordion and says, okay, you got two choices. You're going to play the accordion or I'm going to kill you. So I chose A and studied the accordion for 11 years. And okay, and playing in rock bands and stuff like that, it was a, it was a ball. Beatles songs, Rolling Stones, all the, all the things. So that said, Levittown, New York, Nass middle of Nassau County. The names I'm gonna mention are all people who grew up in and around the area. Billy Joel, Eddie Money, we had bands like the Young Rascals from Long Island. I'll even say the Good Rats because those guys put in a lot of time and a lot of work. I will say the Alessi Brothers. I'll give, give credit. I even played with the and, and sang with the Alessi Brothers. I was a distant cousin, I think. But uh, uh, Billy and Bobby uh, uh, acknowledging your your work and uh, and it, it was it was fabulous. Uh, let's see who else. Uh, well, Long Island was was hot. Most of us came, came from, most of us in Long Island, or a lot of us, came from, from Brooklyn. It seems when the Brooklyn Dodgers left, people moved out of Brooklyn either to Long Island or they moved to New Jersey. So my family, when the Dodgers left, my, fa my father bought a house in Levittown. And I want to tell you, growing up playing, playing music when you were a kid, 13, 14, 15 years old, it was unbelievable. Playing at high school dances, we had a couple of bucks in our pockets. I mean, with the whole band, I don't know, we made like you know, maybe 40 bucks a gig. But $10 at that, in that day would get you, you know, I mean, the girls wanted to hang out because we're going for pizza after the thing. You know, we, we had we had just a just a, a marvelous time, uh, fun laughs and, and and all of that. So uh, that was that was a that was a great start. There was another 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 person I'm gonna I'm gonna mention. I went to Levittown Memorial High School, and a lot of people don't know this, but they're one of the one of the great songwriters of the 1960s came out of Levittown Memorial High School. Her name was Ellie Greenwich. There were also other people in that area. George, uh, George Shadow Morton, I have to mention. And uh, th there was tremendous songs coming out of that area. Of course, they graduated high school and went on to the city and started to, uh, to work in the music business. My guest, my guest today is David Barreto who is also a, a veteran of, uh, of Levittown music. And we'll be, we know all these people. And so I'm, I'm, uh, later in the show, I'm going to get David's uh, viewpoints and, and uh, knowledge of, 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 and his experiences of, of dealing with these people. And, and uh, it's, it's, it's really something else. Because, you know, everybody's got a hometown. And out of the hometown come special things. Uh, I'm, I'm sure that mo many of you have musical identities that you can relate to from the musicians and your friends who, who grew up with you. So uh, that's not to be taken lightly. So I, uh, Ellie Greenwich went to Levittown Memorial High School, graduated in 1958, I believe. Uh, she immediately went to New York and started, went to a thing, there was a place called the Brill Building that was run by a gentleman named Don Kirshner. The Brill Building was a musical, just a musical, uh, it was like a musical college or something. It was, they were just producing Lieber and Stoller, who wrote some of the great rock and roll songs, uh, Sh uh, Stagger Lee, uh, a lot of songs for Elvis. 
uh, in the late 50s. A lot of the rock and roll stuff, Lieber and Stoller, were there. And uh, the, the up-and-coming songwriters like Carol King, uh, Neil Diamond, all these people moved, came from Brooklyn. <laughs> Brooklyn. We are at the, this is, this is the show on the, uh, in, in the family of the Brooklyn Cafe, Cafe TV. So it's, it's such a natural fit. Barbara Streisand, Barry Manilow, all from Brooklyn. A lot of music, a lot of music. And we took it out to Long Island with us. So let me tell, let me say more a little more about Ellie Greenwich. Uh, Ellie Greenwich was a, a, a songwriter, and she got recognized early when she went to New York, got signed uh, with, with Don Kirshner, and worked with, uh, well, fell in love and married a, a gentleman named Jeff Barry, and between them and and Phil Phil Spector. Boy, the names are just huge in the music business. Phil Spector did, created the wall of sound in the early days of music with uh, the Righteous Brothers. You lost that love and feeling and things like that. These great, 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 uh, uh, iconic rock anthems and rock songs. Well, Ellie Greenwich was a background singer. She sang on uh, sessions. She did, they did everything they had to do to, uh, to make the demos and make the, make the songs happen. Uh, she, she, uh, just to name a couple of the songs. Well, I don't know if we really want to go into that right now. I'm gonna, I'm gonna play on, play, play some of them on the piano for you. But uh, so here's, here's Ellie Greenwich, in high school. <clears throat> what did she do? What did she play? Did she play an instrument? Sure, she played an instrument. She played the accordion like, like everybody else. She, she grew up playing the accordion. <laughs> <laughs> and well, that sounds funny. She went to, she went, after graduating high school, she went to the Manhattan School of Music, where they immediately threw her out for playing the accordion. Now, <laughs> that, that in itself is, is uh, you know, it's fodder to, to be determined to be a, become a success because you love music. It doesn't matter what you're playing. I don't care if you're playing the zither. If you're writing hit songs, you're writing songs, writing music, it does not matter which, which instrument you're playing. And I went to Berkeley School of Music in 1971, and guess what? They told me the exact same thing. Now, if it sounds like I'm knocking Berkeley School of Music, in 1971, I was, because I wanted to go for film composition and they said, no, man, you can't bring that accordion in here. And I, th it, it, because they, they wanted to, they were a jazz school, jazz. We'll get into that term later. But jazz school, and I'm saying to myself, if you ever heard Art Van Damme play jazz accordion, well, that should have gotten me in the door. Never, I'm not going to, anyway, long story short. I went back to Long Island with my tail between my legs, disappointed as all, all could be, and went to the phone book. The writing was on the wall, switched to piano, and I studied, found a teacher, Mr. Bernard Scott, Carl Place, New York. I could talk, to him, talk about him for an hour and a half, too. English gentleman from, from Norwich, England, Classical music only. I was figuring that classical music, classical study, would improve my technique and create my technique uh, quicker than, than anything else. The discipline of practice. We'll get into that in future shows. Uh, so, uh, Mr. Scott, so I stayed with, I, I told myself I would take five years to make the switch to piano from accordion and then see if I was, could, could do it, could make the switch. And so I actually stayed with him for eight years while I was playing rock and roll and bands and things like that and all the clubs and stuff. I tell you what we're going to do. We're going to stop for a commercial right now. Can we take a commercial break right now, folks? And we'll come back and we'll, we'll pick up with, with, with Ellie Greenwich and some of her, from, some of her fabulous songs that she uh, put together 
while she was uh, at the Brill Building in New York. Okay, we we'll stop right here. Being a successful woman in business means having the courage to own who you are. We understand the challenges faced by women and we are here to help. Our team is here to develop the best strategy designed just for you. Your path is unique and with the right tools you can accomplish your dream. From radio to TV, from podcasting to magazines, we create the visibility to amplify your impact in business. At New Dawn Media, we are here to help bring your message forward and help your business flourish. It is time for your message to be seen and your voice to be heard. Contact us at 866-224-5422 or brooklyncafe.tv. Your voice can make a difference. Do you want the opportunity to have a TV show or podcast? Now, at Ant Media Productions, you can host your very own visual broadcast anywhere around the world. With our talented group of creators, we will provide you with show elements, board operations, and any on-screen visuals you'd like to showcase. All you must do is log on to your computer and communicate with your viewers. Contact Ant Media Productions at 866-224-5422 or email hello at amp2.tv to start your own show today. Do you have an idea for a show or a podcast? Do you want the opportunity to be on TV? Ant Media Productions is partnered with True Oldies Real Radio Station and powered by many online platforms such as Roku, Facebook, YouTube, and even Amazon Fire to help amplify your impact. Do you want your voice to reach a wide audience? Call us today at 866-224-5422. Welcome back to the Song Studio with Johnny Melnick. For more information, go to johnnymel.bandcamp.com or email johnnymel at comcast.net. Hey, all right, back, back with Johnny Melnick here. Again, right off, right off the top of, the, of my head, I want to thank again uh, Pompano Beach uh, Chiropractic Clinic, uh, Jason Cheshire and, and, and John over there. Uh, they, they'll take great care of you. Great care of you folks if you're struggling with any kind of health problem with back and balance and all kinds of things like that. Any kind of pain. Anyway, their number is 954-943-1044. So we're talking about we're talking about, thank you very much for that. Uh, we're talking about Ellie Greenwich, one of the great songwriters. She's in the Songwriters Hall of Fame, and she, she went to my high school, just to catch up, quick synopsis. Uh, she went to my high school, Levittown Memorial High School, in the, in the uh, late, late 50s, and uh, went on to the Brill Building to write some of the great songs of the early 60s, which these songs are the forerunners of everything in the music business. So number one, check, see if, see if you know this song. I think you might.
saw them, they were on the, the bill with the Beatles in 1964 at Shea Stadium. 1964 at Shea Stadium. <laughs> we got more. Next song that she wrote. I know you know this one. Go to chapel and we're gonna get married. Go to the chapel and we're gonna get married. We love you and we're gonna get married. Go to the chapel. Songs, great songs. Ticket for an airplane. Ain't got time to take the fast train. Lonely days are gone. Now we're coming over. Baby, is you who we let her? Ellie Greenwich. Wow. More. Let me name a couple others that she worked on. Met him on a Monday and my heart stood still. On girls just want to have fun. Cindy Lauper. Who did? No, she didn't. Cindy Lauper came in today. Where's my microphone? <laughs> okay. Rip Deep Mountain High. Tina Turner. Do I diddy? There she was. There she was. Just a walking down the street singing. Do I diddy? My baby does a hanky panky. Wow, that's Tommy James. Uh, that was Tommy James and the Shandells. Not to be confused with the Shandells. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let's see what else. Later, she worked in her later years. Geez, Ellie worked with uh, Electric Light Orchestra, Cindy Blondie, Gary U.S. Bonds, Dusty Springfield, Bobby Darin, and Frank Sinatra singing background and arranging vocals. So she's got quite a, uh, Connie Francis, Ellen Foley from Meatloaf, Neil Diamond. She actually discovered Neil Diamond. Ellie Greenwich discovered Neil Diamond. Uh, wow. And produced his early hits, Cherry Cherry, Kentucky Woman. So, you know what? Let's get, uh, let's see if we got David on the phone. David Barreto is a friend of mine. And if you have, uh, have you, you've come across uh, our song "Positive Direction," David David's got the whole tail end of that particular tune, and uh, he did a fabulous job tri triple tracking his vocals. And uh, for for my money, it's uh, it's the best part of the tune. So uh, can we? Hey, Dave, you there? Yes, I am. Thank Atta you. Boy. How are we doing so <laughs> far, David? I'm doing fine, uh, recapping everything that you're saying, all the memories, because I have the same exact memories. <laughs> we did grow up in the same environment, and it was a fabulous place to be. Yeah, I was very fortunate to meet Ellie Greenwich and went to her apartment, and uh, just a, a great lady, and a big thrill on my part. And I uh, was with um, Shadow. Shadow Morton, George Morton. Yeah, Shadow. Shadow brought me up there. Yes, yeah, Sh Shadow George Morton. Um, they together. Shall I tell you how I met? Weren't they? Uh, weren't they co-writers on Leader of the Pack? I don't know the details. I know that Shadow got the credit, and um, he told me he was the sole writer. But uh, I yeah, wouldn't yeah. know that. I heard that Ellie was Ellie was in on that in on that too, but uh, but just the music that came out of Le uh, Levittown area, Beth Page. Uh, uh, the surrounding areas. Uh, well, I, I mentioned Billy Joel earlier. From you know, he he was right across Hempstead Turnpike in Hicksville, but on the other side of it, in Island Trees, Island Trees High School was right. Eddie Money. Yeah, yeah, he was in our, in my school. Right. Okay. Is that where you went? Island Trees. 
Huh? Is that where you went to Island Trees? I went briefly to Island Trees and then I moved to Florida and then I came back and went to Magartha, General Douglas Magartha in Levittown. Okay. Yeah. And um, my family had a habit of moving around. All right. Well, so we went know. back to Florida. Huh? <laughs> I wish I could see I wish I could see your face. We don't have a, we don't have a live we don't have a live feed right here with with David, but uh, I'm imagining so so tell me, Dave. Well, tell me, tell me about your uh, your early uh, musical uh, life in uh, in Levittown and Long Island, because you. Well, were... let me just, let me just say that uh, it started out with me playing in clubs like you did, uh, copy bands, and one day uh, Shadow came into the nightclub that I was in and uh, sort of discovered me, and then the ride started. Uh, we can you hear me clearly? I got you. Okay, and so then uh, Shadow was uh, a really wild, crazy, great guy with lots of stories. Go ahead. And um, he took me uh, to Lieber and Stoller. We went to Lieber and no. Stoller's office. Yeah, those names songs. again. Sure. And we went uh, and I met them and inside the office with, was Beth Midler getting a so song. <laughs> uh, she was trying to get a song from them. And uh, yeah, you know, uh, I met them and then um, with Shadow, uh, we went as far as to Las Vegas and we met Elvis together. And oh. we went to, yeah, yeah, we met Elvis. He was four or five feet away from me. And we saw his show in Las Vegas Hilton. And uh, from there, we went to, I had an idea that reggae was going to start happening. So he says, okay, let's go to Jamaica. And we went to Jamaica. And although we went to, we went to see if we could record some reggae stuff with the Islanders there, but uh, Elton John had the studio fully booked. Wow. The only studio. Where was that in Kingston? Kingston and his piano and everything was set up and there was no moving it. And I met Elton as, as well at the, uh, the uh, hotel, him and his band, and just met so many people with Elvis, uh, with um, Shadow. Listen, uh, let, me ask, yeah. let me ask a question, Dave. Shadow was responsible for, uh, he wrote, I, I, we're talking about songwriters here and this is a Shadow was yeah. a producer, also right. a songwriter. He I hear a story that he, he he wrote Spanish Harlem. He wrote he oh, wrote no. yeah he wrote the song mm. Spanish Spanish Harlem. I've never I've never heard that one. Here you go. Come on, give me some give me some juice here so I can play. Yeah, which is a great song. He also says there's a story that he came up with it on the spot. He was, he was being introduced. <laughs> He's producers and saw and, and and they were he was supposed to have a song and he really didn't have one. And he and he came up they, they came up with this song. And well, on, the cuff, was, uh, on the cuff to uh, that was a great one. And, and Shadow was an amazing guy. Yeah, he was he was uh he was one of the only honest people that I met in the business. He was really uh um he wasn't out to rate me or anything else he was just pure honest he gave me my share and um we had a ball together we had a good time that's great that's so from there talk up in switzerland well, yeah i um back in uh, 1983 i got uh, this uh i met these guys from switzerland that were looking for a lead singer at my rehearsal hall in, uh, in New York City. Uh -huh. And uh, they had a little sign. I saw it on a Wednesday and I right. said, let me uh, let me answer this ad. And I answered it and uh, it was a, a little rich kid from New York City whose mommy had lots of money and decided <laughs> to give him his own flight, his own plane, you know. And so they took, uh, we flew over to Switzerland and I met the group and they sucked. It was so bad. 
Yeah. And I'm saying to myself, oh, geez, what the hell? Okay, I'll spend a week or two here and then I'll leave. But then I got a call from another band in Basel, another part of Switzerland, and they were great. And they wanted a lead singer, so I got the job. And we went on to open up for Quiet Riot, met Eddie Van Halen, uh, opened up for uh, Nazareth, uh, just just everybody that was in the circuit at the time. Uh, it was a great ride. I enjoyed it. Met a lot of girls. <laughs> and <laughs> yeah, well, I was well, that, that's uh, you know uh, well that's I guess that's part of, that's part of the package there. But you know, yeah, yeah, I had okay. a great time. Talk to me about your songwriting. Let's go. Let's go into your songwriting because I want to play a couple of your songs. Uh, oh, we have, thank you. Yes. We have smile. We have smile here. We have uh, can't get next to you. Which one would you like to hear first? Okay, I didn't write those two songs, but it's all right. I'm gonna. Uh, hear you, I'm gonna hear you sing. Yeah, I, I haven't put much of my uh, new stuff on yet because uh, I'm still recording like crazy, writing like crazy. I'm working with some Nashville people. Oh, no uh, kidding. So you can tell me about yeah, that too. Yeah, yeah, well, I met this guy uh, in uh, Cocoa Beach, Florida, and he happened to be uh, uh, an executive of a, a company, a record company, and uh, a great musician. We got to talking, told him I wrote some stuff. I sent him my songs. He says, okay, come on board. So we've been working out situations where we're going to be working together and uh, putting out something together. But in the meantime, um, I'm writing with this very talented player here in Switzerland. Uh, his name is Zeretto Pola. And uh, we are writing like crazy. We got 120 songs already and all are done well because he's got a studio and we do everything. Fantastic. I do the lyrics. I do the lyrics, I do the singing and some of the music, and he does all the music as well, and it just gels. Well, listen, David, the, the time we work together on Positive Direction, we're going to cue, we should cue up, cue up Positive Direction if we can, just to, just to let it go. Uh, after, but let's, do you want me to play one of your YouTube uh, songs? Is that good so if people you like, get yes. an idea of what you do? Okay, sure. Can't get next to you? And may, may, may I, yeah, and may I say, Johnny, you are a great player. I'm very happy to know you. You're super on that piano. Well, thank you, Dave. Thank you, David. I was telling how impressed I was the day we were. I, you came on. You came down to Florida. You came from Switzerland and, came, and drove yeah. down to Fort Lauderdale that one afternoon and right. knocked out. I mean, this guy can. This guy is on the money, folks. If you're if you're a songwriter and uh, you you run into people like this, it's gonna. Time and money is, you obviously know that time and money is the important thing in songwriting and getting th getting demos done and all kinds of things like that. Well, David came in and went bang, 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 four levels of, four li four levels of, 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 of harmonies and, and uh, parts that he had in his head, just laid them out. I don't think he did a second take on any of them. It was just perfect. And I was like knocked out. So thank you for well, all, that, songs, all that work. You're welcome. The songs were great, and uh, the atmosphere was great. Why not? Yeah. Well, with Positive Direction, I am. Uh, let, let's talk about it because we're connected with this, and we, we, you have a part of this song too that I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to forget that. I think I told you that a long time ago when we first did it. Yeah. Uh, you're, you're a major part of that song. So, I, I've, I've actually uh, trademarked the, the 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 term Positive Direction. So it's going to become my brand. That's going to it's be a great my, song. It's going to be my brand, and I'm going to try to motivate people to do more, to do better, to get off their butts, and, and just stop whining about life and, and what, what they can't do and just get going because it's all up to you, man. you got to move in a positive direction. And that's, yep. that's my story, and that's what, that's, what, that's what my story is going to be from here on out. So... I don't know what we have ready. Can we play? Uh, can we play Dave's uh, "Can't Get Next to You"? Do we have that in there? Fire away, kids! My version, my version of it. Your version of it, yeah. Cover tunes, man. That's what we get. That's what we. That's what we do. Thank you. David 
Beretta, ladies and gentlemen. If I wanted to Oh, I can build a castle Of a single grain of sand I can make a ship sail On dry land But oh, my life is incomplete And I'm so blue Cause I I can't get next to you, baby I can't get next to you Next to you, baby. I can't get next to you. Oh, I can fly like a bird way up in the sky. Yeah. I can buy anything that money can buy. Yeah. I can turn a river to a raging fire. Yeah. And I can live forever if I'm so. But oh. No, I can't get next to you, baby. No, I can't get next to you. No matter how I try. Okay, that's okay. You have enough of that's that. That's a heck, that's a beautiful version of that song. Yeah, it was fun doing that. Yeah, man. Wow, we fantastic. So tell me a little about that guitar player was so sweet as could be. Uh, that's his his name is Monk, and uh, he was um, just a great. Uh, he had his own studio, and we partnered up together. And he put the music together. I put the vocals together and all the background singing, blah, blah. And uh, we did about 15 tracks together. That was Sweet. one of them. Sweet, man. Is he, is he in Switzerland too? No, no. He's from um, Florida. Okay. He's from, uh, shit, I, I get my my places up messed up here. Let me see. Uh, was he in New York? Uh, no, he was in Florida. Yes. Uh-huh. Great. So it sounds like it sounds like Dave, you, you you know, here's one of the things. You and I have, have been doing this since we were kids. Yep. And it was one thing I want to I want to talk to all of the songwriters out there, is that if you have any kind of any kind of like I don't know any kind of you know getting down. I mean, there are moments when of course you think nothing's ever going to happen, but the minute you quit, you're done. So. <laughs> One thing I re I have to total respect with about and for you, Dave, 
is, is that uh, you, you and I are still still standing, and yeah, and, yeah. and going forward in a here's here's the word a positive direction. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, uh, this is my whole life. You know, this is what I do. Bless you, man. This ain't no this ain't no dress rehearsal. <laughs> No, no, that's great. You know, great. my life is creating and writing songs and singing. And, uh, there's nothing more that I want to do. That's fantastic. That's that's what it takes. It takes a so total not, takes a total commitment. I will, I will say this, John. Uh, I'm grateful. I'm be, I've been very blessed in my life, and I'm very grateful for that. And the most thing, and I know this is going to kind of shock you, but the most thing I'm most grateful for is that I never made it big big well you know what because, yeah, i'm still alive i'm still alive and i don't think i'd be talking to you now if i made it big big <laughs> you mean if they gave you all that money and <laughs> yeah oh no i, I would have got blown away that's for sure well that's for sure yeah well i'm still i'm still chipping away at the mountain myself bro but, you I, know, I, so... I went to the backstage and we, i won't mention the star but i went backstage and there was a mountain a big table mountain full of coke just a mountain <laughs> full of coke and I said, Shocking. no, no, I'm not, I'm not going to touch that because I know I'm going to like it. So no, <laughs> no thanks. And there you go. I'll tell you, I'm just, I'm just grateful that uh, I survived. Well, you're surviving and thriving at the same time. Thank you. So, yes. you know, keep going. Do we have another song by David? Fire away. I think it's, it's this Smile. Thank you. Yeah, Smile is an old standard. I had to tackle it. We look forward to it. And let me just tell you, uh, Charlie Chaplin wrote this. Yes, he did. I, was, I, I didn't know that was, that was the one you were going to sing, but I, I can't wait to hear it. Smile though your heart is aching Smile even though it's breaking when there are clouds in the sky, you'll get by. If you smile through your fears and sorrow, smile and maybe tomorrow, you'll see the sun come shining through for you. Light up your face with gladness. Though a tear may be ever near That's the time you must keep on trying Smile, what's the use of crying? You'll find your life is still worthwhile If you just smile
beautiful, David. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. That's a masterpiece <laughs> right there. That's a great, it's a great Thank song you. and a, a great performance on that song. Thank, Thank you. you. You bet, man. So here we go. We're in the last, last quarter of our show here. And uh, so where does David Barreto go from here now? What's, well, what's on, what's on your thing? You're going to just keep writing. You, you've got a Nashville connection and hopefully uh, it's going to be a conduit to place in a song with a, an established artist. You know, well, I'm in the song, I'm in the songwriting business. I haven't, I don't have too many designs on uh, being a, being a face and being out there any, uh, at this point. I just like to get some songs into some people's hands and let's start from there. So that's really what my, yeah, my that's, goal is. That's realistic. That's realistic for the age that we are. Uh, I have discovered that there's a great way since the music business has changed so much. It certainly uh, has. Have you heard of sync licensing? Sync licensing. Talk to me about it and tell our, our, our audience, the songwriters out there, who might well, not be familiar with sync licensing. If, song, if songwriters really want to get in the business these days, I mean, it's really hard to get publishers unless you, mommy and daddy are in the business or you got an uncle or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, you'll find that every star that's out, out there is connected. They have mommies and daddies or rich cousins, whatever, but they are connected. To break into this business, you need that. But anyway, sync licenses is if you send your song to these agencies, they have it on hand. So if a movie or TV production or anybody needs a song, they'll come to them looking for songs. And if your songs are in there and they use it, you can make some good money. I know some people that have made $80,000 for 30 seconds of play on a song played on their, on the TV. Whitney Houston made something like 250,000 for 30 seconds using, uh, uh, I mean, Dolly Parton. Uh, yeah. I will made, always uh, love you. Right. Just mm -hmm. 35, 40 seconds of that generated about $240,000. So Boy, those, you can no, those, imagine. Those are numbers I can hardly see from here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, and you know, the low end, of course, you know, is 50,000, 40, 50, whatever. You know, I would, also, I would also stress to tell people not to sign nothing, no, no publishing deal ever, because you get raped. Try to hold on to everything you can until you're in a situation that you know what you're doing. Not attorneys. You have an attorney? Uh -huh. Do you have an attorney? Yeah, you know, I don't have an attorney because I am the attorney now. I I just <laughs> I just brought out my own thing because I know enough now. You know. There you go. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's just common sense. You don't give your publishing away. You don't give your mechanical rights away. You don't give uh, your masters away. So let me ask you: Have you do you have your own publishing umbrella that you all your songs are in? under uh i have my own situation yes until until i find the right situation where yeah. i can but so you self-publish you know? i i self-publish yeah. too mel songs publishing right. yeah i'm with ASCAP until there. i can find the right situation but i'm not giving anything away i'm writing too much i'm doing too many good things and uh, i'm working my ass off still doing this i'm not giving it away that's great good for you dave i wish you all yeah. the best I wish you thank all you. the very best. I thank you so much for coming on. And uh, we'll do this again up the road. Is that okay with you? I can't wait to see you in person. Yeah. Maybe we could do some stuff and, and share some music, uh, either you know, online or uh, uh, Pro Tools and do some stuff. Help out. Yeah, that'd be great. That'd be great. Uh, I still uh, love the song you sent me, uh, the blues one. Yeah. Remember that? Yeah, yeah, sure. We got uh, 100 yeah. miles. I think I sent you 100 miles. A hundred miles. That's it. Yeah, a hundred miles. That's a little little church thing I, I, I yeah. put together, man. It's, anyway, uh, let's continue continue working with each other and uh, let's see what comes out of it. I would love that. Thank you and uh, God bless you. Continue. Well, let's see each other in Florida. I'll be back over there. Okay. Okay, David. You bet. You take care. Are you you still take care. Of you. Oh yeah, 
before Lord okay. sure. You take okay. care of yourself, my friend. Thank you, and thank the people there. Sure will. For the general. Sure will. Hey, listen. Goodbye, guys. <laughs> that was David Barretto, ladies and gentlemen. My uh, my buddy living in living in Switzerland. I'm sure he's uh, everything's on time in that country, huh? The Swiss watches and cheese and and the stealing stealing wine from France if they have the chance. It's right next door. Anyway, great to have you all with us. I hope you hope it was something positive coming out of out of all of this and heard some great music from David Barretto. We look forward to seeing him again. Once again, listen, I want to I want to thank my sponsors, the Pompano Beach a Chiropractic Clinic. Doctors Jason and John over there, uh, they're specializing in, uh, in chiropractic physiology and neuropathy. So if you're having problems with, with uh, uh, neuropathy, is a, is a, it seems to be something that is affecting a lot of people. I, I don't want to go into it, but I think it has to do with it's, you know, tingling in the, in the legs and senses and circulatory things. Uh, they can help. The number, the, the number at the Pompano Beach Chiropractic Clinic is 954-943-1044. Make an appointment, go see what they say. Don't live in pain. There you go. It was a pleasure having you all here today. I hope you enjoyed the show. Ellie Greenwich, give me a ticket for an airplane. Ain't got time to take no fast train. Lonely days are gone, now I'm going home. My baby, she wrote me a letter. Joe Cocker. Yeah, Joe Cocker did that too. He did it like. show folks song studio back again on the second i think it's the second of april is our next show and we look forward to seeing you listen uh, you can call in the studio the studio number here is uh well 888-994-4995 huh studio a that's studio a you have any questions uh, songwriters out there, if you want to get involved here on the song studio, I, I will be glad to speak with you, and let's let's talk about music. Okay? Look forward to seeing you next time, folks. It's a song studio. Hit positive direction if you could, because that's where we're going.
Thank you for watching. To view more of my songs, visit johnnymel.bandcamp.com. If you would like to be on the show, contact me by email at johnnymel at comcast.net. We welcome all musicians and songwriters from all genres. Tune in next week for more music only on the Song Studio with me, Johnny Melvin.